Thor, so I hope you guys don't mind if I do a little, little throat warm up before we get started. Okay, I'm good. So, um, how many brown people we got in the audience tonight? My, my kind of brown people we got in the audience tonight. Gibran's the only one that can answer that question properly. So, I am Indian. Uh, I come from a very Indian family. Uh, my mom's got a lot of pet peeves. She's in like, uh, in high school I used to come home late all the time and she never used to like that. So I used to think I was like James Bond and sneak up into my room and you know, I'd do cartwheels and stuff. It's not important. Um, but I would, you know, I used to miss the scene downstairs but the conversation would be my mom and my dad. And I caught up one day and she went up to my dad and she said, I don't I don't know if this is your fault or that bloody television's fault, but this is not happening every day. I am not putting up with this, you hear me? I am I'm done. You deal with this. And now I have to now have the most awkward conversation with my father I've ever had in my life. He comes up to my room and he goes, Son, what is wrong? You're coming home 15, 20 minutes late. I don't appreciate this, okay? I am just trying to watch the football game downstairs. And your mother is getting on my case, all right? Right, is it the young television? Is that why you're doing this? Are you doing the drugs? Is that what it is? Is it the hippity hoppity music? Okay? Please, just pull your pants up. No one wants to see your buttocks. Or that general area at all. Okay? And for the love of Ganesh, can you please just keep the roof down for one day? Okay? So, I do live, uh, I live in a place called Carriage Park, or as I politely have nicknamed it, Brown Town. Uh, and a lot of people will attest to it that we invade that area like you, like a foreign country. Uh, so there's a lot of us there, but like the management of Brown Town is terrible. Uh, when I used to live in my old apartment, we used to have washers downstairs, and there was like a flood. I'm not sure what happened, but there was a flood in my basement, so we called the management. They came in. Very ignorant, this man comes in and knocks on the door and he goes, What's up? Uh, what seems to be the problem? I don't understand you on the phone because of your accent. <laughs> Chinese or something going on. But washing machine? I'm not sure what the dialect you're using there, sir. So after 20 minutes of me describing to him what a washing machine was, he said, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. I got you. He comes downstairs, takes a look, he looks around it, and then he does this, I swear to God. He comes underneath and he goes, he pulls out a black pen and he goes, There's nothing wrong with the washing machine. I was like, really? Really used a black pen? Here, I got a green pen that seems to be more useful with the uh, washing and drying utensils, if you want to use that, that should accurately tell you what's wrong with it. Meanwhile, I've got like Hurricane Katrina Part 1 going on in my basement. I'm catching carp, I'm fly fishing down there. You would bring up. And so finally he comes back and he goes, So, oh, yeah, we figured out a problem. There's a, like a pipeline that, that blew up. Might have been a rocket or something that went through it. So, we're going to need to fix that. And I swear to God, he did this. He comes in with a sledgehammer and he just goes, oh. That's still in that wall. I run a museum out of things white people have crapped into my wall. There's a Humvee. It's good. I charge $5 per, per person. I, um, I hate going to airports because you know how everyone says it's hard to be black. It's not true anymore. It's hard to be brown. All right, I go to the airport. There's no random security check. They see me and they're like, skin color, four mocha, you're getting checked. That's what it is. You know, they look at me and they go, whoa, 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 sir, you've been selected for a random security check. Take off the shoes and pants. And I'm like, I'm not even wearing shoes. It was a long flight. You know, I'm wearing sandals. He's like, take off the pants. And I said, sorry, sir. There's no reason to yell. You know, sometimes, let me stop right there. It's a 14 hour flight to London. Okay, and it gets hot on the plane, and sometimes you get, you know, very hot, and you need to change up some things. And sometimes the security line gets called, so you don't get to change up certain things, okay? There's no reason to sit there, point, and yell, he's got a concealed weapon, he's got a concealed weapon. That hurts my feelings. There's no reason for that. So we are, we are cheap people. Uh, Jews got nothing on us. We're, we're like the cheapest of the cheap. You know, I, I go into a store, I go into a department store, and I can smell the sales. And I'll walk in there and be like, 
last 35% off right there. Wait, there's a 50% off. No, no, I smell 75 right back there. I smell it. We can't even take a compliment without telling you how cheap we are. You know? Like, what do you think of the shirt right here? You think it's good? Yeah. You do? Yeah, that's right. Track jacket, express, $15.99, 35% off right there. We tell you the store, the price, and the percent off we got on it. Why can't we just say yes? That's, thank you. This is, you also are wearing a very nice hoodie today. But no, we tell you price, store, percentage off. We are cheap. We can't beat that. I did, um, I did a 10 Catholic Mass with Father Peter. Uh, I'm not allowed anymore. But um, I was like the only brown person there. I had no idea what he was talking about. But oh, your God, you guys love to sing there. You know, you guys start going off on songs every 30 seconds. I got into it. I pulled out a lighter. I was like, yeah, JC, JC, JC. <laughs> they were like, you want to put that down, son? I wasn't allowed to get communion with the crackers and the wine. I just had to sit there, watch everyone get it. Everyone was mocking me, looking down over me. Oh, what is the body of Christ? Oh, is, that's a good body. It's very, it's garlic in taste today. Hmm? Got a little garlic in this system. What is this? What is, ah, blood. This is good blood. It's good blood. You want some? You can't have some because you're a heathen. <laughs> So, how do you, anyone know how, what the apocalypse is supposed to be like? What they say the apocalypse is going to be like? Anyone? They say it's supposed to come with zombies, like the dead will rise. That's, that's not true. I'm just telling you no. I know how the world's going to end. The world will come to an end when Keith Richards dies. When he dies, everything that's in him, the drugs, the alcohol, the numerous amount of STDs that's floating around in there, are all just going to be released upon the earth and it's going to be over. When I hear that Keith Richards has died at the age of 277, I'm going to be like, Mom, where, I need to go to a temple, a mosque, a church. i got a lot of sins to atone for. I've been a bad person. I am so sorry for eating meat on Friday. Is any, uh, any drinkers in the audience tonight? I'm going to be like, hey, hey, come on now. There's only one person that attested to that. But, um, any smokers in the audience? I'm looking at the back row and the gentleman in the green shirt right there. He's mainly looking at the lights like the second coming of Christ, so. But I'd rather pick smoking over drinking any day because when you drink, terrible things happen. You know, you text your ex-boyfriend or, you know, you hear that Timmy threw his truck into a tree and killed a moose. That's unnecessary. The moose population does not need to be controlled that way, you know. What happens when you smoke? Nothing. You lose your Pop-Tarts, you wake up the next day, and you're like, where are my Pop-Tarts? Oh, that's right, I smoked up and got hungry, now I gotta go buy more Pop-Tarts. Now, you're never gonna hear, I guarantee you, you're never gonna hear the story. You're never gonna hear a story, did you hear what happened to Johnny last weekend? Yeah, dude, he came out of the gas station with the Snickers in his head, Pothead comes right out, bit off his pinky for the Snickers. The pinkies are not going away anywhere. Sadly enough, the pinkies are not going away anywhere. I'm going to be honest with everyone, uh, I hate cereal commercials. I do not think that they are sending the right message out to the kids. I'm sorry, this is shaky. No. I don't really want to film you anymore. Captain Crunch. I've seen that one a couple He's times. He's not teaching Good job. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. If you got a boat, <laughs> ram into a house, dance inside us, shopping us, whatever. It's cool. we got a busboy to clean that up, you know? Crunch it me. What is that? Is that a new form of child molestation, Captain Crunch? Is that what's going down here? Are you BFFs with Michael Jackson? Do you go golfing with him on the weekends? Let's find a background report on Captain Crunch. Talk about a little bit about uh, Tony the Tiger. No, that's not cool. Tony the Tiger, I'd like the things you do. No, because the things he does is hunt you down and eat you because you are food to him. You do not like the things he does. Hey, Tony, if I could, I would be you. No, you wouldn't. You got thumbs. This is important to you right here. It's an evolutionary tactic that puts you ahead of him. <laughs> Coco Pops. This is a little subject that is near and dear to my heart. That poor bird, I don't know what's in Coco Pops, but I feel that bird. Me and him, we're tight. 
you know? He tries to get off Cocoa Puffs, tries to do a crossword puzzle. It's words like crunchy, munchy, chocktastic. That's not even a word. Why they couldn't have crossword puzzles? He goes crazy for Cocoa Puffs. I feel him. I ate, I ate four bowls of Cocoa Puffs today. That's a lot of puffs. In puff. one sitting. <laughs> one sitting. In one sitting, too. Four yeah. bowls, one sitting. And there's no bowls left. <laughs> no bowls left. <laughs> uh, Trix Rabbit, this fool. This fool just seems to get a job. That's all he does. You know, he dresses up as a backstreet boy, tries to get these cereal off these kids. Get a job, Trix Rabbit. Starbucks is taking applications right now. Get out there, may earn your money, and buy your cereal box. What's wrong with these kids? Why can't they just share? Did you not pass kindergarten? Sharing is caring, kids. Just give the cereal to the stupid rabbit. It's gonna cut all the things. Say no. Like a train conductor again. <laughs> That's all for me, guys. Thank you very much.